talk from President Trump as he deals with his biggest international crisis thus far. Yeah, supporters and critics are watching very closely to see how he will respond to those deadly chemical attacks on Syrian civilians. KKL9 political reporter Dave Bryan has a reaction from the White House on this complex foreign policy issue here. Yeah, and the question is, what is the next step? The president today said, I'm not telling. Declaring he inherited a mess from his predecessor at home and abroad, President Trump said the chemical attack in Syria crossed red lines and many other lines. The president indicated that for strategic reasons, he won't publicly reveal what the U.S. might do about it, but he made it clear the attack changed changes things. As President Trump and George King Abdullah headed to the White House Rose Garden, it was clear that their meeting was completely overshadowed by the chemical massacre in Syria. The graphic and disturbing images, the president said, have changed his view of the Syrian war and of that country's president, Bashar al-Assad. That attack on children yesterday had a big impact on me. Big impact. That was a horrible, horrible thing. And I've been watching it and seeing it, and it doesn't get any worse than that. My attitude toward Syria and Assad has changed very much. But disturbing as it was to him, the president gave no indication of how or if the deadly chemical attack on innocent civilians would change U.S. policy towards Syria and the region. One of the things I think you've noticed about me is militarily, I don't like to say where I'm going and what I'm doing. I'm not saying I'm doing anything one way or the other, but I'm certainly not going to be telling you. At the United Nations, U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley pointed the finger of blame at Assad's closest ally, Russia, which she blamed for blocking more vigorous U.N. action in response to the Syria chemical attack. Time and time again, Russia uses the same false narrative to deflect attention from their, at, from their allies in Damascus. If Russia has the influence in Syria that it claims to have, we need to see them use it. We need to see them put an end to these horrific acts. How many more children have to die before Russia cares. In fact, Haley and the Russian representative had an emotional showdown at an emergency UN meeting on the attack. Мешает. The Russian representative angrily accusing the U.S. of inflating false news reports on the chemical attack and blaming the Syrian rescue group, the White Helmets, for spreading lies about the attack. Well, Haley firing back with a thinly veiled threat. When the United Nations consistently fails in its duty to act collectively, there are times in the life of states that we are compelled to take our own action. Even low-key Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, who met with Mexico's Foreign Secretary on Wednesday, came down hard on Assad and Russia. Well, there's no doubt in our mind uh, that the Syrian regime under the leadership of Bashar al-Assad is responsible for this horrific attack. And uh, we think it's time that the Russians really need to think carefully about their continued support of the Assad regime. But even some Republicans feel Tillerson's statement last week that the Syrian people would make the final decision on whether President Assad stays or goes opened the door to this week's deadly attack. It's my belief that if you're Bashar al-Assad and you read that it is no longer a priority of the United States to have you removed from power, I believe that that, that is an incentive to act with impunity. While still blaming his predecessor, former President Obama, for not taking decisive action on Syria, Mr. Trump made it clear it's now up to him to fix it. But playing the blame game didn't go over well with some Democrats. What he's done with Syria is emblematic of what he always does. Instead of a policy, instead of action, there's just blame. Blame doesn't solve the problem. Back at the White House, President Trump also addressed North Korea's decision to test another ballistic missile Wednesday ahead of President Trump's meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping. We have a big problem. We have somebody that is not doing the right thing, and that's going to be my responsibility. Now, the president indicated that North Korea will be at the top of his list when he meets with China's president, Xi Jinping, tomorrow at Mar-a-Lago, the so-called Winter White House in Palm Beach, Florida. Mr. Trump expected to push the Chinese to turn up the heat on North Korea, forcing an end to their nuclear weapons program. Jeff, Lena, we'll see what happens. Yeah.